Hello everyone and welcome to this video tutorial on JSON for JavaScript developers. So JSON, it stands for JavaScript Object Notation and it's a way that you can store data like this object I have on screen in string format. So if you don't remember anything else from this tutorial, do remember that JSON is just a string and it's just a way of storing data in a string in a recognized format. So you might be wondering, why do we bother with JSON? So why would we take this native JavaScript object that's on screen and convert it into a JSON string? So the answer is twofold. First of all, a string is a very lightweight way of storing data. And second of all, JSON is a language independent format. What this means is that you can read a JSON string, not just in JavaScript, but in any programming language. So you can think of JSON as a universally recognized way of storing data in a string. Now let's get coding. So what I'm going to do is show you how you can create a JSON string containing the same data as this native JavaScript object here. So I'm going to store it in a new variable, which I shall call JSON object. Now, because JSON is a string, and in this instance, I want to write a multi-line string, I'm going to be using backticks here. So this is template literal syntax, and this allows me to create a string across multiple lines without any kind of special syntax. Now, even though JSON is a universal standard for storing data in string format, it is based on JavaScript. So as a JavaScript developer, you're very lucky in that JSON syntax is actually very similar to JavaScript. So to save a bit of time, what I'm actually going to do is start by just copying and pasting the syntax of that JavaScript object that I created above. Now, a big difference between regular JavaScript object syntax and JSON syntax is that keys are in quotation marks. So in order to make this a valid JSON object, I need to add quotation marks to each of the keys here. A more subtle but still important difference is that in a JSON object, you can't have a trailing comma after the last entry. That is possible with a JavaScript native object, but not for a JSON object. So what I'm going to do is to log the contents of this JSON object to the console. And then you can see the difference between the JavaScript native object and the JSON object. Now you can see for the native JavaScript object that I logged first, that this is being read by the browser as an object. And an important feature here is that I'm able to query an object. So if I was to say my object dot name, then I get back Michael Jordan. If I say JSON object dot name, it's undefined. And this is because the JSON object is not an object that is recognized as native by JavaScript and it's read as a pure string. Now, as a JavaScript developer, it's actually quite rare that you would create a JSON string in the way that I did a few moments ago with the template literal syntax. What's much more common is converting from a native JavaScript object to JSON in order to post data to a server in a universally recognized format and the other way around. So it's very common when you make a request for data that the payload is in JSON format. So the conversion process is quite straightforward in both directions. First of all, I'll show you how to convert from native JavaScript object to JSON string. So for that, I will comment out the one that I created manually. So to make a conversion, which I will do above the JSON object that I created manually, you want to access methods on the inbuilt JSON object. So to go from JavaScript native object to a JSON string, you call stringify. So it's JSON, all in capital letters, stringify, and then you simply pass in the native object you want to convert. And I'll save the result of that as JSON object. So if we take a look at the result now in the console, you see that we're getting the same result as last time. So it is all on one line, but that doesn't matter. It is still valid JSON syntax. So you can see the keys have been wrapped in quotation marks and it's in string format and no trailing comma after the last entry. Now, if you want to go the other way, so from JSON string to a native JavaScript object, then you also need a method on the inbuilt JSON object. 
So I'm going to delete this console log. So we are no longer logging to the console, the original native JavaScript object, as you can see there. What I'm going to do is to take this JSON string object and convert it to a native JavaScript object. So I'll do that down here. So I'm calling a method on JSON again. This time it's the pass method. So it works in the same way, just pass in the JSON string that you want to convert to native JavaScript format. So I'll call this JS object and I'll log that to the console. So in the browser now, I'm logging the JSON object and then I'm passing that JSON object to native JavaScript format and then logging the JavaScript formatted object. And here's the result. So in the first log is the JSON string. It's converted to a JavaScript object and that's what you see in the second log. Now in practice, you don't actually use the JSON pass method that much when you are making a request for data and converting the JSON to a JavaScript native object. Now that may surprise you, but there's actually a special method for doing that. And that's what I want to show you now. So how you would convert JSON data to JavaScript native format when you are making an actual HTTP request. So down here, I have some code that makes a HTTP request to get a JSON file from my own system. So this could be to an API endpoint, but in this case, I'm just using a file that exists on my system. Now, before running this, what I need to do is to comment out the code that we had above so that it doesn't interfere with what we're doing down below. So what I'm doing in this code is I'm making a request for a JSON file that exists on my system. So that is in the same folder as this index.html file that I'm working from. So this is what a JSON file looks like. It's exactly the same syntax as earlier, except that you don't have to explicitly state that it's a string because a JSON file is always a string. So all you need to do to create a valid JSON file is to use the same syntax that I showed you earlier in JavaScript for creating a JSON string and save the file with the .json extension. Now back in JavaScript, I'm using fetch to make a get request for this file. So I'm waiting for the fetch request. That's going to save the response object in a variable called data. Then I'm logging that to the console. Now, before I do anything else, I just want to show you the response object that I get back. So this isn't a tutorial on fetch, but it's important to know how this works so that you understand how the JSON is being passed. So if we take a look at the body of the response object, you see here it's not the payload, so we don't see a JSON string here, but a readable stream. So what you have to do in JavaScript is to read that stream. So that's what I'm going to do next. So I'll save the result of reading that stream in a variable called res. And it's an asynchronous process reading a stream. It takes a bit of time, which is why I use the await keyword here. Now I'm going to read it first of all as text. What I'm going to get back now is the JSON itself. So I of course still need to log that to the console if I want to see the result. So you see here the contents of the JSON file that's on my system. Now what you could do here is to use the JSON pass method to convert this to native JavaScript format. So I could wrap the result in json.pass and that would give me a JavaScript object in the console. So this works perfectly well, but in practice, you usually don't use json.pass in this context. And that's because there is a method available on the response object that you can use to not only read the stream, but also convert it from JSON to JavaScript format all in one go. So I'll delete the wrapping of the result in json.pass the method available on the response object that does everything in one go is JSON. So if I save that and we take a look in the console, you see that we have a JavaScript native object. I didn't use the json.pass method. This 
JSON method on the response object is doing everything for me. It's reading the stream and also converting the payload, which is in JSON, to JavaScript native format. So that's just about everything you need to know about JSON as a JavaScript developer. If you do have any questions, I'm happy to answer those in the comments section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please do consider hitting the like button down below because it helps others to discover the video. And if you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.